And, you know, I've talked to some of my friends. I was like, you know, like, I could play wheelchair sports. Like, that was actually, it was kind of fun to, yeah. like, just roll around. And I was like, it's like having a bike right. that just the wheels are beside of you. And then, um, and I was like, but also like a bike, it would be really terrible to not, to like that, to be your only like way of getting around. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, I don't know how, if we have like wheelchair basketball leagues around here, how like, you know, how easily those get populated. But I kind of wonder if they do need people to do stuff like that. You know, like, there's actually quite a lot of, especially in the high schools, uh, adapted sports. Yeah. And then there's a, a whole, um, the hockey community up here is a thing called sled hockey. Yeah. And that's actually usually taken off. There's all kinds of, you know, the hockey community, as you imagine, in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but do they need, like, you know, people with functioning legs to like participate to just make up numbers like I don't know oh yeah no I, you know I don't I don't know I don't think so okay because I was just thinking that would be like an easy way like a fun way for people to like volunteer and do something good you know because like I remember when I worked at Hamlin University once once a year we had a accessibility day yeah and they went and got wheelchairs and, and, and let able-bodied people yeah yeah You know, I've been around these lakes, I don't know, we'll just say dozens, yeah. between cycling and in the car. I have no idea what any of them are called. Okay, but like this, it, is, yeah. this is Bidet Makoska, yeah. this is Lake Calhoun, and that's yeah. obviously a huge, the one back there was Harriet. Yeah, so yeah, this lake, the road is still Lake Calhoun Parkway. <laughs> Is what? A lot of the folks who live in this neighborhood don't want to change it. Yeah, I mean, I get the, like, changing your address is a pain. <laughs> right. So they, what they did in uh, Chapel Hill, I think, was smart, actually. I don't know if you know anything about this. No. So they uh, had this thing called Airport Boulevard, and they changed it to be Martin Luther King Jr., oh, okay. which a lot of people were kind of like, it's like 2005. Why are we doing this now? This right. is just stupid. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I guess the, the, the flip side of that is better late than never, I guess. So, um, but what they did is all the street signs um, underneath the MLK, they say Historic Airport Boulevard. Oh, interesting, yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, your mail's still gonna get there if you like tell your friends that you live on Airport Boulevard or something like people are still gonna be able to get around. The problem here is it's getting rid of Calhoun. Well, it? right, it, that's true. That's a good point. Um, yeah, there, there's nothing particular. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, a airports. I think uh, flying is somewhat controversial in the whole like global warming aspect of things, but. People do it. I mean, it's not, it's certainly not the same type of controversy. Right. And the airport's still there, so as long as it's there, then, you know. But, uh, but yeah, no, that's true. So is there a separate airport in Chapel Hill, or is it just a... I mean, okay. The, they probably have a little field. The, yeah, yeah the, 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 like, factual answer is yes. But, so what they, they fly in, you know, like, trustees yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a commercial airport. No. Yeah. But, uh... Kind of like Holman Field in St. Paul. Yeah, like yeah. Private, private planes. I've never, I've never been to that airport, but, um, but yeah, I mean, similar concept, certainly. You have, a, like, the commercial airport and then a smaller airport. Uh... Yeah. I think part of the reason why that it's like I don't really pay that much attention to the names of the lakes is that when I'm riding around them, I'm always riding around both of them. Right. 
So it's they're like a pair. You know. So is it all uh, all prepping for Tuesday from here on out and Labor Day weekend? Or? Yeah, pretty much. It's my son's birthday today too. I think yeah. I'm gonna try to get together with him and so, actually buying a house. He's uh, buying a little house over in the West Seventh neighborhood. Nice. So do your kids live in town? Yep, they both okay. have apartments in St. Paul. And uh, Walter works for Caribou Coffee. He's an assistant GM in the St. Paul district, and so he's. Right now he's downtown in the Skyways where they have like four of them, but no nights and no weekends and no drive throughs so... Just mainly he does administrative stuff. I mean, he knows how to make all the coffee, but, yeah. but then when people don't show up for work, then he has to make all the coffee. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so... And then uh, my daughter's starting her second year of law school at the University of Minnesota, so... Yeah, grown children. It's kind of weird. But it's nice, too, and they live close enough that we see them. We did a big family vacation this summer to Cape Cod. I'd never been before. And we've got a brother who lives in Tokyo with his family. And then her sister lives in San Francisco. So every two to three years we try to pick one location and I'll go. Ah. Yeah, I've never been to Cape Cod myself either, but I lived in New Hampshire for a bit. So I guess that I guess Cape Cod's like southern Massachusetts, right? Yeah, yeah, it so. is. You know, it's I mean it's the beach. It's not revolutionarily different than <laughs> um, Although there are more and more sharks there now, which is crazy because essentially for 150 years the fishermen killed all the seals because the seals ate the fish. Well, in the early 70s, the Mammal Protection Act, they had to quit killing seals. Uh -huh. Now the seals are coming back. And um, with the current the seal population, now the sharks are coming back. Uh -huh. So the, they had the first shark fatality in like 50 years last year. Wow. Nah. I'll push the button here. Whew. <laughs> My squeaky freak. Um, so we can go up and catch the greenway up yeah. there and head back that way. I'm gonna pause to. I've never tried one of these. Called Crowbar Mill on the Go. Right. I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical of the name. <laughs> it's 190 calories. That's not a meal, but it's not bad. I have to be careful. Actually, I didn't even look in the ingredients. <laughs> I should have looked at the ingredients. I'm not supposed to have chocolate. Ah, uh, of course it has chocolate in it. I tasted it in it. I was like, you know what, that's pretty dark. Are you allergic to chocolate or...? No, it's just, uh... I have pretty bad GERD. Oh, that's right. You told me about that. Yeah. I mean... Ch chocolate is surprisingly hard to remove from the diet completely. Has a terrible problem with onions. And oh my god, it's in everything. You try to eat out and not eat. Yeah. Onions. I mean, restaurants put onions in everything. Yeah. Well, it's like a flavor right, enhancer. enhancer. Right, yeah. right, right. But I mean, it's like a lot of times she'll ask, well, can I get that without onions? They're like, well, no. Yeah, it's in there. Baked in the sauce. Yeah. Does she have problems with like scallions and stuff like that too? Scallions or? are not as bad as okay. garlic, she's fine. Mm. But it's something about onions. Yeah. It's just, it's weird enough that like not enough people have that problem. Yeah. It's hard to accommodate. I saw your point, but <laughs> I was like, it was like not, no, I was just like, that was more of a like captain of a ship point, and I was like looking into the in, lo looking into the distance. I ride by myself all the time, and I'm not used to. Yeah. My wife, whenever we ride together, like, 
She goes up hills fast, I go up hills slow. Uh, I think my wife and I tried to bike, we've tried to bike twice, ever. Like one time we went and got ice cream, and then another time like a mile into it, and maybe not even her chain popped off her bike. Which in and of itself, you know, you just put the chain back on. But it, it was like wedged into like underneath like the direct and I, I just like I had to have like work gloves to just like pull it out right. so you know, it's funny, like, we run we occasionally will try to run together yeah neither one of us runs very fast but she runs faster than I do <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know I've, I've become very methodical in my older age I find it easier to get you know I just like to go anywhere in a hurry yeah, fair enough. And uh, my wife is still wired to like get there fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my wife she doesn't like to really do much outside. She goes up. We got a gym up on the tenth floor of our building, and she yeah. goes up there and works out. But is she liking her job? Sometimes. Okay. I mean. <laughs> I mean, in general, yes. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So it's a mix. She's actually the uh, she's the medical school director for the department of anesthesiology. Okay. Um, but yeah, sometimes they have residents. Um, she's in a leadership role, I guess. Is what I remember. Yeah, but not, but not with the, not with the residency program. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, they all do some stuff with the residents because the residents are like in anesthesiology. So like, yeah, yeah. but like she does 95% peds okay. and like you don't do pediatric anesthesiology as a residency. You do that as a fellowship. Right. That's even more advanced, I guess. Yeah. So, um... So like she did a a, a year fellowship at um, Cincinnati Children's, okay. and so um, they have in Minnesota a uh, a fellowship program uh, for peds. Um, I don't know enough about it, and it's controversial enough that I should probably not say anything about it on camera. But uh, suffice it to say, the facts are that they do not have a fellow this year. So, um, he waved us. Yeah. I saw yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, oh, wow, still... There's a detour sign, so maybe. I mean, I was like a long way from here when they had the detour, so I, I was a little bit confused to be honest, but... No, I've ridden on the surface streets. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. Sunday afternoon, too. Yeah. Um, but, uh... The, the medical situation here, uh, particularly for pediatrics, it's just not in the cities as a whole, not specifically University of Minnesota. Yeah. It's not very good. Okay. And there's two reasons, two like large reasons for that. Um, one of which is the stats are worse, look worse than they are. Okay. That's because there's no trauma one level hospitals in the Dakotas. So by the time they get here, they're yeah. outcomes. Yeah. So that's part of the problem. So like mortality rate in the cities is like, it's like 80th in the country. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but the other thing, uh, more specific to peds, is that most large cities have one pediatric hospital. Okay. We have like five. It's true, yeah. Um, so the problem with that is that you don't get enough volume to keep specialists. Oh, 
So it's purely like, well not purely I guess, but in large part it's like a recruitment thing. Right. You know, you've got to, the, the specialists don't want to do all these like run of the mill ca cases yep. and there's just not the volume to keep them happy. I was watching my, uh, my father-in-law, an orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. He recently retired. He had a private practice in McHenry, Illinois. And one of the biggest problems he had was, you know, he's old school. He's kind of a generalist. He yeah. He could do complicated surgery, but he was also, you know, he could do anything. Yeah. All the, all the people that he was, so basically to, when you have a private practice, the person who, who buys it from you essentially takes out a mortgage and buys it from you, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you get a, a cash out and then they take over your patients. Right. The problem is all the people coming out of orthopedics, like, well, I do wrists. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, what yeah. about knees or shoulders? No, yeah. I only do elbows. Or, you know, yeah. So, so he had a hard time because people didn't want to take over a small practice. Yeah. And they needed to be a generalist because they wanted to get, you know, I'm probably better compensation too, I guess, if you're a specialist in downtown Chicago hospital. You think we can get this? Oh, yeah. You know, John was as much a general practitioner as he was a surgeon because people yeah. would come in and say, well, this, it hurts when I do this. And yeah. He'd be like, well, that is or isn't an orthopedic issue because right. Uh, like this, this big thing. Is, so my daughter hurt her was actually broke, broke a cracked a bone in her foot and was having a hard time. She eventually got it all figured out. Yeah. People don't do physical exams the way they used to. Hmm. They look at X-rays and MRIs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't actually like palpate, like feel around. There's a lot less. There's a lot more reliance on the machinery yeah and a lot less of the sort of kinesthetic you know which I mean with the advances in imaging and everything else you can see yeah but the reality is you know well it's expensive for one thing right but it was sort of just interesting to you know intuitively when I, when I talk about it it, makes, it sounds like common sense but 